Greetings. Uh, April the 4th, or April the 1st, April Fool's Day actually, in the evening 2020. And I'm making a video for uh, just to outreach in faith uh, with the gospel to where, where the Lord's heart is outstretched to, to the lost fallen world, people looking for hope during these um, uncertain, worrying times for every nation, it seems, every nation around the world is um, experiencing the, the seriousness of this uh, coronavirus outbreak and uh, already uh, the pressure is mounting like the, uh, it seems to be that the uh, screws are being, uh, thumb screws are being tightened and the pressure is increasing upon uh, nations, their uh, leaders and the oppressed people and the people in general who serve the uh, public, power, uh, public body and the lawful powers. So really my heart is uh, considering um, anyone and everyone really but especially the the vulnerable and the frightened and the oppressed and the forgotten people perhaps in the world in especially in my own nation considering my own uh, countryman and my own neighbour and uh, recognising uh, what was kind of up the road before we've actually reached there so I'd like to give some commentary on my thoughts about the coronavirus and uh, the media, how it's portrayed by the media and the use of the media by our, our government and some hypocrisy and uh, some uh, transgression and uh, how the Lord said that the blind lead the blind, let the blind lead the blind for they both fall into the ditch um, there seems to be a lot of um, double talk, double speak from the media almost like a, a punch mirror the media is like a punch mirror that's shattered and fragmented and you get snippets of truth and I find it quite frustrating when our government steps back and uh, communicates through the media with its um, with, with its line, with the um, sound bites of its direction and its uh, approach to the current circumstances and then the spinning of the media and all the different voices to the left and to the right and um, counter information to what's being portrayed and uh, I noticed uh, before it's actually happened that uh, there's some uh, concerning uh, things that I've noticed, um, food for example, um, I noticed even three or four weeks ago it's very as though the online shopping was already closed down, the shelves were empty before there was a panic buy, so I've noticed that um, there's uh, hands manoeuvring over, perhaps over the shoulders of the government, perhaps through the government, perhaps they have knowledge, but it seems to be that the voice of the government is to protect the vulnerable, protect the elderly, protect the people with underlying sickness and they're prioritising their online shopping, but to qualify to actually get online and shop if, you're, if you've been encouraged on the one hand to self-isolate not infect your loved ones or the elderly or the frail. If those people need need food or support, they've got their only hope is if they've got family and friends looking after them, dropping off food. And B, can they take care of themselves? So if there's nobody to take care of them, they can't take care of themselves. So I could see this already um, a problem from the start when the announcements were made of. Um, how it unfolded, how it's rolled out, the dealing with the coronavirus and the uh, advice from the government. And I, and I don't want to be a, a fear monger or a, um, to, to cause any uh, riotous, 
rebellion against the government, but just to consider um, perhaps what's going on. And it seems to be it's going to we're going to hit a choke. And um, I'm considering with what I've observed, what's actually going on. Do the government actually know what's going on? And how's this going to play out? And uh, I've foreseen. And I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, but I, I, I've foreseen the problems that people are going to get encounter, and if it experienced what what people will start to encounter, I've already experienced it from um, the lawful powers anyway, and uh, I'm just concerned of what's going on under the umbrella of this um, coronavirus outbreak. So I wanted to share a few things to consider about um, viruses. If you think of foot and mouth, foot and mouth disease, anthrax, um, when there's um, an outbreak, the what would happen is, is on every property, every farm where there's an animal, they would have foot baths. So you would not, con if you're coming onto the property, you don't want to tread in. Um, infection and the virus so you would go through a foot bath and wash wash it off because you it will pick up on your feet and you could tread it in and you could also pick it up and take it out of the um, isolated um, decontamination area so any uh, virus which is isolated it's been trodden all over the place so they will have a um, a foot bath uh, disinfectant uh, area where you disinfect your feet so I just wondered well why that you know common sense tells you how to uh, be careful and, and, and seek out knowledge for, your, for yourself rather than rely on a nanny state to tell you what to do but if you apply some common sense, you look. You should come in line with what, what the. It should fit in line with what the the law, the lawful powers have asked you. Until they go beyond a point where you've crossed over into a, um, a dictatorship, but we're not at that stage yet, and we possibly won't be in 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 the near future. But. Um, Really, this this outreach is a warning, a warning to the whole world, really, to um, any possible ear that is uh, hear this. God willing, Lord willing, I pray that uh, people will catch this and hear the word of God and hear the hear the warning of the the gospel of Jesus Christ. How that the Lord uh, commanded the whole world to repent to uh, and seek the forgiveness of sins and to fear God um, as a scripture Proverbs 1 7 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction so being as this is on April Fool's Day I um, ask the question are you, you know are you a fool in the world are you, are you foolish are you lost are you are you seeking truth and uh, considering my the, the, my testimony of, of the faithfulness of the Word of God, the fear of God, the pureness of God, the, the righteousness of God and the holiness of God, I just want to warn people because uh, salvation is today um, and the Gospel is simply to repent towards God, to realise you're no good, that only God is good, only God is just and that he sent his son and his son willingly died and was sin for all people he became sin and by his death we could obtain life eternal life by his his power and the glory of God and then he rose from the grave and so sinners can pass from death unto life from sin unto eternal life which is a free gift and all have, all have sinned the whole world of sin and come short of the glory of God and that was um, taught to Israel, uh, God's chosen people, beloved people, and they sinned. And it's all being repeated by the uh, the world today, the same sins that are recorded in the 
in the camp and body of Israel are lived out in the, the Christian body today, the, the apostate Christian church and the even the lives of uh, faithful but uh, believers in the body of Christ, the sinners, we're all sinners. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, so there's not a righteous person on the, on the planet, we're all full sure, uh, no flesh will be justified in the presence of God, only God is um, only God is holy and righteous and God doesn't share his glory with anyone, He's only God is pure and holy. And so we all need saving. And this is the warning, especially during this uh, coronavirus outbreak, is, is nobody knows what's ahead. Nobody knows what the world's machinations are. You know, whether we've got an enemy, whether we're at war. Uh, the public are always the last to know. And um, governments can be misled. And governments can mislead and deceive. So um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to... Um, convey any rebellion against the government, any uh, rioting or any fear mongering or any, you know, cause any panic, but just to uh, be aware, to be aware of what's going on and to not um, return any evil with evil, but to seek to do good, to seek righteousness, to seek forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins, which is freely on offer, which uh, the gospel went out from Jerusalem for the Jews and it's to the Jews first because they're the chosen people and the remnant was saved and when Jesus Christ uh, rose from the grave and his um, apostles witnessed his resurrection and many people witnessed his re resurrection they died as a, a testimony of the testator who spilt his blood once forever at the Passover to pass over from from sin and death and the law into the law because the law the law given to Israel revealed sin it, it, um, so following the law keeping the law doing the good goodness of the law couldn't uh, bring the believer to uh, perfection to righteousness it, it convicted all those that practiced the law of sin it convicted the whole world world of sin and the law is holy it come from God but no person could live it and Christ came to fulfill the law, to sharpen the law, and he lived the law perfectly because he was God, he was holy. And so he, be, he was the lamb, the Passover lamb, once forever, for, to be a propitiation for uh, the sin, for sin. So he was sin for all man, mankind, because God is just and judge. Um, he's righteous and, and his judgments are just. Is like a balance, and if you um, sin against God, because any sin, sin is unbelief and selfishness and the lust of the eyes, lust of the heart, lust, the pride of life, the unbelief, turning from God. We've all turned, the whole world has turned from God, gone its own way. I'm going to share um, a whole list of notes and scriptures that I've laid out, but. Um, all people are uh, sinful and fall short of the holiness of God by a long way. So Christ became sin for all mankind and he suffered all sin being holy and, and innocent. He paid the tipping of the scales because all, all the sins offend God because God's holy. And so sins cause injustice and iniquity. So to re-establish the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, God's judgment, uh, God uh, sent his son to uh, die, to give his life up, to be sin for us, that by his holiness and pureness and life and fulfilling the law, completing the law and establishing the law by grace, by what doing what no man could do for themselves and that saved their soul to restore the world from sin unto holiness and life so Jesus Christ was sent by the Father and the Father was glorified by his son offering his life and by the power of 
the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Son was given power over life to take his life up from, from the grave. So his resurrection, and he's a resurrection unto life, the door, the Passover, the Lamb, the Son of God, the Word of God, the resurrection and the life to live a cursed death for us that uh, he could save sinners from death and, and hell because we've all offended God, we can't live in his presence because we are unholy. So Christ with his holiness, with his holiness, his life, become death for us that we could obtain to life, eternal life. And since the beginning mankind has sinned and every, every person has inherited sin, the Jews, the Gentiles are all sinful and uh, all need to repent, all need to realise that the world sinned against God, it's turned from God and gone its own way, which is, Christ, which is why the Father sent his word, his son, to die, to bring all unto himself, that he may be glorified in the repentant sinner and that sinner may be saved and enter into God's kingdom, God's heart, the moment they believe. Uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, 6, chapter 2, uh, chap chapter 6, verse 2, just read that quickly. For he saith, I've heard thee in a time accepted, in, in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. We then as work, this is verse one, uh, we then as workers together, talking, talking of the saints, with him, with Jesus Christ, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. So the Lord Jesus Christ is salvation. He he is the word, he is the spirit of prophecy, the uh, living God, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And the only way, I, the Lord said, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no man come unto the Father but by me. So all people are lost, and the only way to enter, to receive a righteous heart, a righteous kingdom, to enter into God's kingdom because it can't be established by man because the kingdom is heavenly and it's in Christ Jesus, it's in God the Father, the kingdom of God and that was um, promised uh, the Jewish people, that was promised, it's their promise and uh, they were promised the promised land and the kingdom of God to come and that kingdom came in the flesh and he was the entrance into the kingdom and the Passover and the, the, the door, opening the door to salvation and life. And so his work was finished on the cross because he accomplished, he fulfilled all the prophecies of the Old Testament because he was a word of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy. And he spoke to, he revealed in the dispensation to the Jews of his... Uh, coming, the preparation, the law, for him to fulfill and establish righteousness through faith by his grace alone, that all, that Jew and Gentile may enter into that kingdom, that promise that Abraham was promised, that Abraham's people were promised, but it was a future promise to hope, hope for, it was never realised by the people who had faith in God and, and promises to made to Abraham and the, the promises made through the prophets and Moses. They didn't see the realization of the kingdom, so they're looking for their Messiah. And their Messiah came, but he didn't come to establish the kingdom, he came to prepare people to enter into the kingdom. And then he would return as the king with the kingdom at the end. So all religion today is redundant, it's um, out, out of a job, it's, um, especially now, it's uh, completely shut down, it's um, retired. 
and it hasn't got the gospel, it doesn't teach the gospel, so all religion's gone its own way to establish its own kingdom, to, to its own righteousness, to bring in the kingdom of God, to make peace with the world, to make the world a better place and establish its own righteousness, what it thinks uh, God's kingdom is. Um, it's a mistake that the, the Jews will make to, that they can um, establish their own righteousness and, and it's the same as the Western world and the, the apostate, fallen away, lost world, the Gentiles and the apostate Christian church which goes about in the mask of Christianity to establish its own righteousness. It, it, it cannot because righteousness come by the way of Jesus Christ. And it's only by uh, through faith can we obtain his righteousness, his mercy, his forgiveness for our sins and the free gift of eternal life. But that's got to be chosen. So if anybody's listening and they think the people can save the world, come together and save the world, um, you need to save yourself because it, the Lord will change change you in in your heart because if you're unfounded on God's righteousness you're founded on you're lost you're founded on um, error darkness you don't know so you're only only then can you establish your own righteousness because you've denied the righteousness the rock of God the foundation and the certain surety and the pureness and holiness of, of God's foundation which is the rock which is Jesus Christ which was witnessed which he, he shed his precious blood and uh, so did the uh, apostles of Jesus Christ and they were the remnant of his seed they believe and they were the promise and they received the promise and because uh, the nation of Israel um, rejected the gospel of repentance and and they rejected Jesus Christ the gospel then opened up to the Jews and uh, the Gentiles, the non-Jewish the non people, so a Jew and Gentile, the promised seed and then the promise was extended to, any, to all the world that anyone would believe may repent and believe, repent towards God and believe in Jesus Christ in his death, burial and resurrection, paying for the sins of all mankind, that that person could personally be saved and come into the relationship, enter into the kingdom in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and to be delivered from the wrath to come, which is going to come upon the world, and then to return with the Lord in, in the hope that that person will receive today, because we read in First Corinthians, today is salvation. Now Jesus is the same today and forever, he's, he's resurrected, he's not a historical figure, he's a living, interceding God, he's outstretched, he's outstretched to the Jew, he's outstretched to the Gentile, he's outstretched to all lost people in need, but God is, uh, he won't hear the wicked, he or people who are lost or unfounded, he won't listen to their prayers until they come to, to to repentance, they come to faith alone. First uh, Timothy uh, chapter two, verse one to five speaks of the verse five and six speaks of Jesus Christ being the only advocate, the only mediator, the only person, the only way that anybody could enter into fellowship with with, with God the Father, with with the Triune God, the God the Father, the intercessor, intercessor and mediator Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost is the only way is through his beloved son if his beloved son rejected uh, Psalm 2 kiss the son lest he be angry in his wrath king uh, I'll read that verse Psalm 2 bear with me down but I've lost it, I'll, I'll flip through to Psalm 2, Psalm 2, 
uh, verse 12 kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little blessed are all they that put their trust in him so the gospel is to fear God to repent to realize you're a sinner and to call upon the Lord call upon the Lord believe in the Lord Jesus call upon God the Father and believing in the completely trust and believe in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ that he has died for all sinners and he will he's atoned for the, every sinner and he will grant you the free gift of eternal life the minute he's appropriated the minute that his salvation is appropriated it's received by belief by humility, by the confession of uh, your sins realising in your heart you're a sinner confessing to God that you're a sinner and you, you believe in Christ's salvation his death, burial and resurrection you believe with all your heart humbly if you seek you will find if you knock it shall be opened unto you and he will save the believer where they are as they are wherever they call upon him the moment they believe because because he's a God's eternal and he's uh, coming to time and so his, his time's now salvation is today now because the world is heading for nobody knows really nobody knows what's up the road although we have um, we have prophecy if you're a believer in prophecy in eschatology in the end times the last days of, of prophecy of the end of the world the wrath of God the revealing of God's plan and judgment, his victory on the cross and sin reaching the rooftops and God becoming wrathful with every nation so God calls every nation to repentance he calls every soul to repentance that, that's why he died to spare every soul from losing from being cut out from the presence and blessings of God because they haven't believed and it's the most selfish thing is not to believe in Jesus Christ because it's God's gift of salvation freely and, and people don't know that they are born people don't know that they're lost they don't believe they're lost they go, go about blindly thinking it's all alright to follow their own way and others ways but really the fearful thing is that people perish daily people are dying you know after this coronavirus it's more than likely a reality that people are just going to be left. They've already been left already to die in their homes. This has all been statistically worked out. The amount of simulations and algorithms they run in these scenarios, they, they, they know uh, psychology, they know how people are going to behave. And this is my concern that this has been manipulated and it's staged. The, uh, the blockage of food's staged. The, if you want to qual qualify, to get a priority food you have to be not you know they use these words on the TV oh let's protect the vulnerable but if you want priority food if you're vulnerable and you follow in the advice to self isolate and you try and get shopping you're not going to get anywhere because they've all been closed down already and it's easy to say oh well, they're all jam packed they're all booked up but how many people you know, there's more people that can't get shopping than actually that are blocking up the the bookings because the bookings have been blocked up from the start, and no one can question. Well, who 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 are these people who, who are booked up on the online sites? Because if you want to qualify from the government to get priority, you've got to be a you've got to be elderly, vulnerable, but you've got to have a chronic illness. You've got to. So that, that cuts out 90% of the most vulnerable people. It, it's only protecting the, 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 the very, very, and quite rightly, the most vulnerable. But the most vulnerable who are dying, not the most vulnerable who are isolated, have nobody, have been neglected, and haven't got food. So these people are just going to be left to die in their homes. And if they get the illness, no, one's, no family are going to be visiting them. So there's going to be... On top of the tragedy and sadness and hypocrisy and calamity that, that we're already wading into as a nation, 
it, it, it could get worse. So I, would, I just want to, you know, give people a, a, a warning and some awareness, not not to, not to be a panic merchant, not to fear, but just to be aware, and to if you're not saved, to fear God and seek your salvation now. Whether you are a um, a Jew, whether you're a Gentile, whether you're um, a religious, consider yourself a religious person. There's only one way to salvation. There's only one life. There's only one death. There's only one God. There's only one Word. There's only one Father. There's only one only begotten Son. There's only one Israel. There's only one human race. There's only one blood. There's only one water. There's only one world. There's only one heavens. And there's only one heaven because there's only one God and there's only one way to God and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to find, if you want to find some other way, you've got to be certain. This, the Lord is certain. He's not up for debate. He is. It's because he's not believed. That's not known in the person's life. So the world remains lost and heading for judgment. And nobody knows what's up the road. Um, so I just want to give a warning and a heads up to people. And I've been, you know, in my weakness, crying this out. I could see this approaching uh, several years ago because um, I trust the Word of God. I, I trust the spirit of prophecy. I trust the prophecies in in the Bible. I trust the um, all the words of the Lord fearfully. And I'm not perfect. I am a weak, uh, backsliding Christian and. Uh, I want to, um, but I've received that salvation and hope, and I want to share that with the, with the lost world and the apostate church, and and the lost people of Israel, because I am a supporter of the nation of Israel and the promise, the promises to those people that they are God's people, chosen people, and they're in unbelief. They've fallen out of fellowship with God because of their unbelief, but they're still the promise. And the promise is still open to them, the Gospels for the Jew first and the Gentile. And it's founded on, on it's, a Jew, it's a Jewish Gospel. The uh, New Testament is founded on the remnant who received the fullness and the mystery of God which was prophesied to come and, and, and did come and it is, it's today. Because it's Jesus Christ and to receive his promise, his, his life, his Holy Spirit and the fellowship with with God and the, and the, and to um, him to be glorified in your life to know you're forgiven to know he loves you to know you're loved rather than to just to know of him loving you and and that belief will he will bridge that gap from unbelief to belief to to have that testimony revealed within a person's heart who who applies himself in faith and believes and receives what he has completed, the victory over sin and death to bring that person into life, into the, his kingdom, which is to come. And uh, I, I, I can see up the road there's going to be a squeeze and I pray that there's not panic and there's not um, rebellion against the law and disruption because um, you know, we're, we're, it's right to support the government when they are, you know, doing what they should be doing and they're seeking, they're doing their best and uh, we don't know what they see. They probably see more about this than we do. It's whether they are being completely honest with the truth, whether they are holding back, whether they're being misled themselves, I don't know. But I just want to share some concern and some you know, um, understanding that the Lord knows that there's people that are missing out, but uh, really the whole world's in sin, the whole world is under condemnation. This is um, a consequence of um, actions. Each government uh, successive, successively, successively, on, in succession, inherits a compromise of the previous government and it also inherits all the good stuff that the, each government's achieved. So every government's starting off on a bad footing. And in the middle of this crisis, our government's trying to steer the nation through, through this crisis. 
the best way it can. But uh, with the media spinning and the what what I believe is a, a hidden hand manipulating and gating uh, vulnerable people to get food, so that forces people out into the shops. Now, my concern with that is, I said earlier about foot and mouth and anthrax and you know uh, bovine diseases that um, you know the virus or the whatever it is. It it will get on your clothes. It will live on on in the soil. And the advice, the the, the limited advice the public were given was uh, just to um, wash your hands. Well, what about wash your shopping? Um, have have people considered that? Have people considered washing their feet rather than treading potentially an infection all around the house or? contaminating do the government want you to be is it been calculated that they want to make out that they're doing the wrong thing hold some information behind their back and encourage people to spread the virus around in in the name of doing what's right that's how it seems to me because of not what what they should know and what what's available to everybody but what isn't being spoken of so I can see that the shopping's been gated, which forces the vulnerable and elderly out into the shops. And for all you know, it could be an enemy in the country, um, a foreign power who's sabotaged politically, trying to ruin our nation because we've, um, with this virus, this could be a global threat. It could be released by an enemy, and there could be agents within our company, uh, country spreading the virus. I'm not saying that's the truth, but I'm just considering it's a possibility. And if you're not going to be told by a, um, a, you know, a, a righteous government, um, you're going to be told by a compromised, lying government who's, who can be a bit economical with the truth sometimes and take advantage of situations and be encouraged to take advice of others on how how this should play out because but it's all but um when you study it's already been thought out and played out so the the powers know what the problems what are going to be like having no protection front lines not being tested front line staff not being tested blocking the shops so you've got to go out to get food causing a panic and then ration rationing it early causing people to go out and you know that could be that's all all those things are only doing one thing they're con contributing to the contamination and the cross-contamination of spreading this virus which you were told you only have to wash your hands it's only oh no you, you can't get it any other way well it, it, you can be coughed over somebody can cough over your food and you you're deliver you could get an, a, a stranger deliver you a meal and you can't vet that stranger, you, and that stranger could contaminate your shopping with a, uh, with the virus. So, if you don't wash your food and wash your hands and wash the contaminate your product and then decontaminate your hands and then before you put the decontaminated foot parcel away, you could potentially spread the virus. You could p potentially shred it all into your home, and then that could contaminate your living area and uh, so it seems that it's been fermented and encouraged in the name of uh, doing what's right and I'm not saying the government are doing that on purpose they might just not be aware of that's what they're doing they might be being misled by blind advice and, and, and the consequences it's causing more problems than uh, eradicating them so the frontline nurses not having protection and the tests not being done and the, and the, the traffic jam with the food, not people not being able to get food and now people are starving. You know, you're only just today hearing the concerns of people I was already in the position to be concerned for and trying to avoid this in the beginning. So I was already, I'm not boasting, I'm just um, trying to state that I was already living in a way to protect myself before any advice was given so um, I wanted to avoid I wasn't I, I didn't bulk buy or panic buy I just wanted to get enough food for what 
fortnight ago, that was over a month ago, just to store in the freezer, so I wouldn't have to go out so much and then potentially contaminate my father, who's elderly and vulnerable, so, you know, I, and he's got no one to look after him, so I'm alone with him, he's not, no one's called round to see him, no one, the government haven't written to him, the local surgery haven't written or any concern, and I don't trust them anyway, because I've got a history with, um, you know, uh, that's another thing that annoys me, the uh, government holding the NHS up, the wonderful NHS, and, and these, don't get me wrong, these people are, do do a wonderful thing on the day, but the truth is the whole world is in denial of its own sin, its own wickedness, and the, um, what's happening en masse today in hospitals is nothing new, it's nothing new under the sun. It's been going on for a long time, it's just that the people are realising it, the target's moving, it's getting bigger and it's hovering over more people than it than it did. I've been in that target zone for a long time, you know, um, and so have many other people. But the, um, people are considered dross and uh, lives are hemorrhaging out the NHS. So to hold up the, the, the government seems to use it as a political tool and put these people on a pedestal and it fails to recognise its past mistakes, its past crimes, it brushes it over with, oh, the NHS can't do anything wrong, don't let anyone ever speak out against them. And if you do, and all the, all the wonderful works, and there have been, you know, thank God for these people, because they can save your life. But they can also coldly, cruelly spend lives, and uh, it happens, and it's continually happening. And now they've been found out short, you know, and um, so I think there's a lot of bias in the way the NHS is portrayed, and they've been caught out by their, by all the continual behaviour, and, and these people towing the line and not calling out what goes on in hospitals, what these people know goes on on a daily basis, so it's all coming to a, a consequences and mounting up because they've tried to hide them. They've tried to hide these problems and now they're trying to brush over it. And I wonder if this if this coronavirus is all, you know, um, being used as an excuse, a weapon being used as an excuse to cover a multitude of their sins. And then they can, you know, put the hero status on the NHS, these wonderful heroes. And they are being heroes, I don't doubt that, but um, it doesn't... Um, absolve them from their past sins and the past sins of the government and the past omissions of what should have been done by our government and whatever reason, whether we're they're, they're not being honest and truthful because, you know, the, let's face it, the, the Word of God states that the whole world's in bondage to sin and unbelief, every nation, and that every nation, every, every person who in the world is under condemnation because they've not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. So my my outreach is to fear God, to whether you're uh, lost, whether you're, you know, if you're stuck at home and you might, you, I don't know what's up the road and I could only just try and make people aware to seek the truth, to seek the door, to seek the way, to seek, to seek salvation, to receive the salvation, to repent to fear God and believe and be saved and then if you do die alone at least you at least you die knowing that you are going to heaven that you know that you've been purchased by the holy blood of Jesus Christ and that you're one of his and you've entered into that kingdom which will come at the end which will is at the end of prophecy where the whole world goes into wrath and uh, only a few will be saved in that period and they, uh, the Gentiles will have to um, pay, pay with their lives and the Jews will go through the fire and they will be brought back to their God and their Creator and Jesus will come in, in his full power and glory and to finish off that which he's completed and for it to be a realisation, for it, for, the, for God the Father to be glorified 
in his son on earth so he rules in righteousness forever and he's going to restore his people bring in the promise the kingdom and their salvation but the invitation for those people is today is to repent because if they die in their unbelief they will go to they will perish in hell just like any any sinner um, if you've lost lost a loved one in this coronavirus and you're you're isolated, there may you know I can't offer hope for dead people. I don't know what's in those people, what was in people's hearts, but I do know that God won't be mocked, and that if that person didn't receive Jesus Christ, whether on their deathbed, whether in a moment on their own with their with their Lord, I don't know what what's in people's hearts. Only God does. But so I can't offer comfort for people who, who are dead. There's a sting in death. Um, and if you die unsaved, you, you're, per you're, you're lost forever and you, you'll suffer forever in hell. That's why Jesus died. That's why God died. That's why he gave his life up. That's why he took on our sins and suffered them in our place. That we could receive his righteousness because we couldn't attain it by our own unrighteousness. So he had to die in our place. So if you if you've lost a loved one, I would you know consider your own salvation and and receive it and believe and um, hope that your loved ones received it in them in their last moments if they were alone. If you're if you're seeking comfort, just take comfort in now in God now in your own life and put all that pain and suffering upon Him and He will He will heal you from that. He will lift you through that, carry you through it and dispel all the waves of pain and anguish and turn them into peace and joy and hope and it'll give you that hope to endure anything in this life, any circumstance and to um, be stable, to, to be anchored in, in the hope which you've received um, because I can see that um, at the end of this you know is the nation going to get back on its feet you know, you know are we going to be I, I can't see it I can see this at the building up to the um, time of the beast system I'm not saying it will be but it, it seems that our nation is doomed it's not it's designed this is um, spiritual wickedness in high places working through worldly powers enemies to our nation enemies to the law any enemies to any independent nation and the, these these ambiguous conspiring evil powers are at work and I don't know how much our government are aware but um, it seems that they are encouraging it and, and it's going to lead our nation break it and there's going to, they're, they're already perhaps already prepared for rebellion and a fallout so my appeal would be not to rebel, not to panic it's to fear God and believe and be saved and then the Lord will lead you daily He will carry you daily and steer you to help you navigate this narrow, narrow way because it, the time could be ap approaching where suddenly all the righteous people have gone off the earth they're no longer here because Christ has promised he will deliver his church he will take his body of people those who believe in Jesus Christ being born again and believe in his faithfulness and uh, look up for his appearing and uh, serve his word serve, his gospel, serve the gospel he's going to remove those people and then he's going to the restrainer is going to be removed so um, praying at the moment for the restrainer to lead our country, lead our government, help them, you know, help them, you know, if we're being deliberately choked as a nation by our enemies to stop us getting supplies because, because it's a punishment for leaving Europe or anything like that to, to break us so we don't um, recover and then, and then we have to trust on these people for the the, the money or the remedy from the, you know the powers that be the Roman powers that rule the earth and all the global powers um, under its influence and you know this world is Satan's world he Mammon 
man and what drives you know what makes the money go round the love of money and the, the the control of money over people's hearts and nations hearts and purse strings so we're in this position where we may not recover people are going to are already being considered well they're not going to live you know we're all in this together that's the way it is we can only we can only do what we can do but that can be you know a half truth they could, like Pearl Harbor was taken advantage of, uh, sinking of the Lusitania was taken advantage of to bring people into into war. Um, so, who knows what each how each nation's playing this, how each nation's steering their own people through this um, this uh, uncertain, tumultuous time, and nobody really knows what, what what's up the road. But I can see it getting a strain strain on people and it's interesting how uh, you can't get food but there's plenty of TV the TV and media the media stations are all up and running the banks are all okay government seem to be functioning okay but you can't get food you're forced to go out and queue one at a time and potentially if you're vulnerable trying to stay isolated and you can go out, you're you're potentially spreading the virus around more because they've only told you to wash your hands rather than are you potentially spreading it all around the place. And because they control the media, anything that is against what, what they say, what their experts say, will be um, considered conspiracy theory or fear-mongering or disruptive. Well, I'm just uh, being honest and uh, just to consider these things for people to be aware and to put themselves first, to put their own lives first, to put their their salvation first before they put anyone else first, to try and go out of their way and, you know, because um, if you're relying on food, you've got, to, you've got to rely on either someone to bring, get it and someone to drop it off at your door, so just be careful with uh, contaminated surfaces and just to uh, decontaminate your yeah, food shopping that would be my advice that's what I'm doing and work surfaces you know uh, disinfect so you can <coughs> limit the um, limit the spread and um, educate yourself and, and uh, seek the Lord's wisdom because man's wisdom's uh, you know unfounded the Lord's wisdom's uh, edifying and uh, uh, to receive uh, God's wisdom is, is to begin with fear is to you know receive his love and then he'll open his heart and mind to those who seek and receive and then they will um, learn his heart and mind in the word and they will be renewed in the word and they will be quickened by the word and they will be quickened in their understanding of how the world works and where to get knowledge and who's telling the truth and how to make uh, just judgments of what's taking place to to grow and to be corrected in their in their faith in their walk in their understanding by trusting in God's understanding and his wisdom which is found, founded on his righteousness and not on man's righteousness, man's wisdom, man's knowledge on the knowledge of God, on the wisdom of God the righteousness of God so that's my um, outreach for now and I'm going to continue some more videos on, on top of this to just um, clarify uh, perhaps some um, the triunity, the triune nature of God and how God is glorified, how, how God can only be glorified in a triune being and that, that, that God is uh, one in purpose but three in, in persons, he's uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Holy Spirit in one purpose. So I'd like to show that by the... Um, by a demonstration and, and an analogy and some and some scriptures from the Old Testament to hopefully convince that any Jewish hearer, any Hebrew hearer, any any practiced uh, practiced of rabbinical Judaism or any Israeli to to show in the Old Testament that God is uh, free in one purpose and one in three 
and uh, I'll show you that by the word of God and, and I also want to show you uh, by the scriptures um, how, how the, where the law came from and its purpose and how Christ has uh, completed the law He's, and the, the law's not abolished it's just uh, been completed and fulfilled by Jesus and established by his love by the love of God by the glory of God in the, in, in, in the living God and word Jesus Christ and I want to convey the dispensationalism, uh, the law, sin, and the forgiveness of sins by the only way and the only true and living God, Jesus Christ. I'm the close there for now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.